guys and welcome to Hannah's Historical Kitchen. Today we're going to be talking about the Hindenburg disaster and we're going to be making the deliciously spicy Flaming Hinden Cheeseburgers. So let's get started. Okay, so unless you've been living under a rock for the past hundred years, I'm sure you've heard about the Hindenburg disaster. I mean, it was kind of a big deal. It was the ending to the whole airship economy boom. Once people saw it all over their newspapers, that one exploded. Wasn't cool anymore. Just wasn't. I still think they're cool. But the closest you're going to get to an airship is Goodyear blimp over a stadium. So, sorry about that, folks. The LZ-129 Hindenburg was a huge 804-foot airship that was made in Germany. Its highest speed was 84 miles per hour, which made it a lot faster than most ships. So, most people used it for, you know, air travel to the United States over the Atlantic. This was a luxurious cruise type deal. Now, they even had a special piano made just for the Hindenburg. It was light enough to where it wouldn't weigh down the vessel. Anyway, so, of course, the U.S. banned helium exportation to Nazi Germany because, you know, Nazi Germany. So they decide to pick a better alternative than helium, which is flammable hydrogen gas. Nothing can go wrong, can it? Mm -hmm. In 1937, on May 6th, the Hindenburg was chilling in the sky over New Jersey, just flying over. And when it tried to land, there was a hydrogen leak. <laughs> mm. And the kinetic energy somehow, as it landed in the weather, was perfect to create a spark. And of course, we know what happens after that. Yeah. Mm. I know it looks pretty grim, but actually 62 out of the 97 people in that ship lived to tell the tale. And of course they have a very interesting story about not putting hydrogen gas in a very large airship. Good plan. Oh, and did I mention that the Hindenburg actually had a smoking section in the cabin? Hello? Flammable hydrogen gas! Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, enough of that depressing story. Well, that's a good ending because, you know, a lot of people live. Let's make some food. Oh, the best part. Thank you. All right, you guys, so let's make this delicious burger. I made this recipe up all by myself, and my family and friends love it. So first, we're going to start off with some kind of meat. I like my meat how I like my men, 80% lean and 20% fat. And if you want to use some kind of turkey or guinea pig or cat, that is totally up to you. Whatever meat you feel comfortable with, go ahead and use that. I have some Cajun seasoning, which of course, I live in Louisiana, so you got to put that in your burgers just for a little spice. I have some jalapeno peppers and some onions, which I'm going to saute together to caramelize the onions and soften up the jalapeno peppers. I'll show you that in just a second. I have some breadcrumbs and some egg. That's what I'm going to use as my binder so the burgers don't, you know, fall apart. And then I have sriracha, my favorite hot sauce. You know, rooster sauce. But if you have a tried and true hot sauce, you go ahead and use that. No measurements when it comes to the hot sauce, it's all up to you how much spice you can take and this seems about right for me and my family. So let's get started. Alright, I have here my one thirds cup of onion and my one fourth cup of jalapenos and I'm just going to saute it on up. I'm going to put it on a high heat so it just gets the party going. I'm just going to slide it around the pan until the onions caramelize and all those little bits of jalapeno pepper soften up so it's not weird and crunchy in your burger. Also when you're cutting your onions and your jalapeno, uh, make sure that you put it in very very tiny pieces. Just cut it up real real finely because you don't want your burger to fall apart. We're cooking now! Now one little pro tip that I've learned a long time ago is when you are cutting your onions, make sure you're chewing gum. 
Because believe it or not, if you're a crier like I sure am, chewing gum definitely helps you not to, you know, sob all of your makeup off before you make a YouTube video, for example. So, yeah. Pro tip. You're welcome. Alright, you guys. They should look a little something like this. Nice and brown. Kind of gooey. That is perfect for our flaming Hindenburger. So now that I got my onions and my jalapeno peppers all cooked up, we're gonna add everything together. Let's take off all jewelry and rings. We're gonna add that egg. Then we're gonna add that seasoning spice. Then we're gonna add that sriracha. Oh, get out of there. Come on, I need you. Then we're gonna add our breadcrumbs. Actually, mine are garlic herb, and I use about one third cup, so. Let's say. And last but not least, our awesome jalapeno onion mix. It's still kind of hot, so be a little careful when you mix and stuff. That's hot, folks, kids. All right, and like I said, just use your hands. Best tool ever. You know that the Hindenburg was supposed to be Nazi propaganda. Like it was supposed to go on a whole tour for the Nazis, and that's why, you know, it has swat stickers on it. If you didn't already know that, BTW, the Hindenburg, had swat stickers on it. They were supposed to name it the Adolf Hitler, but, you know, the creator was like, oh, hell nah, we're gonna name it the Hindenburg, after King Hindenburg of Germany. So, sorry Nazis, didn't win today. Booyah. Getting the party going. Oh well, yeah, um, I have some big pieces of jalapeno in here. Like I said, finally chop your jalapeno and your onion. And now to make the patties! It's one of the easiest parts. Um, it actually takes a pretty good technique. Because what you're going to want to do is you're going to grab a hunk of meat. And you are just going to start flattening that puppy out. Now the trick I've learned to burgers like this. When it has a lot of stuff in it, so like the onions and the jalapenos, you have to be really careful for it not to just fall apart. So I like to push them down real, real good, make sure there's no holes chilling, because there will be some holes. I start to create like a great wall of china around my burger. You see how I'm doing that? I'm kind of pinching the sides, making sure it's nice and stable. So it'll just plop on whatever you need to plop it on. Don't want that burger falling apart. All your friends will laugh at you. Once again, we're gonna make a little wall of china around this burger here. There we go, look how perfect that looks. Now let's cook these babies. So after you cook the burgers to whatever temperature that you want them, go ahead and put whatever cheese you want on top. I personally use a German cheese called Butterkase. I'm gonna have the picture right here. It's milky and soft to kind of like cancel out that super duper spice. So it's perfect for this Hinden burger. All right, and then you put your burger on crustini. That's what I got. And of course, what's Hinden burgers without a little Hinden burger? So cute. And to make it super realistic. Oh yeah, that makes it a flaming Hindenburger. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I had so much fun learning about the Hindenburg and making Hindenburgers with you. Make sure to like and subscribe for more of these awesome historical kitchens. As always, keep it historical and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. The smoke detector is going to go off. I'm going to make the fire alarms go off. Oh, my lanta. Ow, I just burned myself. Is that too much, though? Too far.